morning guys. Hope you're all having a fantastic day. I'm out here in the shop today. It's early morning, getting ready to start my week. And I have to basically prep my gear, my EDC, maybe stuff that should have been done this weekend, but we're gonna do it this morning. I have about a year and a half on this handcrafted belt right now. I just wanna give it a quick refinish. Our EDC blade choice for today is extremely dull. It's a Benchmade Osborne, the green standoffs, it's a 940. We'll have a look at that and we're going to whetstone sharpen that in a few minutes. And you guys might have noticed I have a hole in a pair of somewhat new pants of mine. I don't want to throw them out just yet so I'm going to throw a few lock stitches in that and have them back on the road. Leather refinishing, knife sharpening, and basic sewing. All really good skills for a man, a person, to have. And if you can't at least stitch on a, a button or something on a shirt, you gotta, gotta level up, gotta up your game. I'm just gonna use, this is not necessary at all, but I'm gonna use a little bit of leather fabric glue here. This is leather adhesive, it dries really quick and it's, it's, it's a really flexible glue. I'm just going to do that to keep everything in place while I stitch it. It'll just help make my job a little easier here. You could use pins or something, you know, I know people use pins, but... These little speed stitchers are great for little projects like this super fast. Now I don't really mind the hole there but my wife seems to have a problem with it. So, patch it up. Get a little drafty too sometimes when the easterly wind picks up out there. So, so we'll stitch in and we'll be ready to roll. You people out there that want a slick solution for something like this or something to carry with you. This would actually be awesome to carry in like a bushcraft pack or something. This Speedy All, this is from Tandy Leather, but it's a beautiful little piece. You have these little spools of thread and it's a kind of a heavier thread. It's heavier than a normal sewing thread and it's got a little bit of wax on it so it helps it take some grip. So you have that spool of thread that's replaceable or refillable. Then you have this little chuck here, this little clamp chuck, and a needle with an eye at the sharp end, the pointed end, and it has a trench or a groove. And notice that thread runs from the spool down through the trench in the needle through the eye of the needle. You punch that through in the beginning, you pull out as much thread as you want on the back, and you attach another needle. That's what you, you need there. So once that's done, here's what you do. So we'll wind back some of our thread, okay? We push it through wherever we want it. Say right here. Watch your hand on the back side. Now, your needle is through and you see, it works basically like a sewing machine. You've pushed the thread through and you still have your last stitch here on the needle. When I pull, start pulling back, it creates a loop here on the needle. What you want to do is pull your other needle through, keep pressure on this while you pull back. And that is your stitch. A little bit tricky to show here because of the bunches of fabric, but that is how it works. So again, you just sight in where you want to pop your stitch, you push through, you pull back just until Enough slack is created to create a loop. Thread your existing thread through and you pull back. And you've got a lock stitch. That's what type of stitch this is, a lock stitch. It can go really quick. It can punch, because you have a, a big handle and a heavy needle here, it can punch through heavy stuff. Dad used it to sew up the canvas doors for his side by side. It's really, uh, it's really a useful tool if you had to sew up a pack or something in the woods, man. It, could really save you some some headaches. 
when you punch your needle, thread your last stitch and pull back through, then your other needle, the one that was on the back all along, you just want to punch through the front. Snip off, leaving enough thread for you to tie a nice little knot, so that way nothing can come undone. Now if you had to put those two stitches closer together, you could have really drawn that knot there tight. I can't do that. So I'll draw the clothes, but a couple knots. It's wax thread, so it grips really good, and it does a good job as well when you heat it up. See? Far from perfect, but really fast. These are my work pants, so I didn't take the time and line everything up perfectly. You see it's drawn a little bit. That's fine. I will get quite some time out of these, unless I rip them again somewhere else, of course. But uh, saves me saves me a few bucks from having to buy a new pair of pants right now. We're getting there. Almost ready to start our work day. Not too long ago, this raw piece of leather found itself on this workbench, this very bench right here. And here it is back today with a year and a half use. Now, I know a lot of people will go through multiple belts in a year and a half, and this belt literally has only just scratched the surface. You see we're starting to get some beautiful coloration there, some beautiful wear. But, in terms of the belt itself, it is still pristine. Hopefully a lifetime of use out of this, this beautiful piece of leather. But we have to take care of it. That's what we're going to do today. We haven't oiled it in many, many months now. So we're going to use some. I like mink oil. I've been using the feedings. I actually bought this, uh, this container of mink oil here back when I started leatherworking, my very early days, this exact container here, it's lasted that long. So if you're just uh, taking care of your belts and stuff like that, I put this on all my leather sheaths. So if you're just taking care of your, you know, you have a nice pair of leather boots or taking care of your leather belt, things like that, you can imagine how long it would last. Let's just see what this mink oil does. Should just add some richness back to the finish and a level of protection of course. See how a good quality piece of leather shapes to your body there? Oh yeah, look at that. Now I could easily, or if you have a, a pair of leather boots or a belt like this, I could have easily gave it a light dye. Just get a piece of paper towel or a piece of shop towel and just take a little dab of dye give it a light white but as you can see not necessary maybe down the road if I really start tearing up the finish of the belt I could give it a re-dye but at this point in time definitely not needed just let some oil soak in there into that dryness Give that beautiful luster now. The back side is our like our suede side. We're not gonna bother oil on that. That's just beautiful. Stiff bristle brush, like a boot brush or that type of thing. This just helps improve the finish of the belt and helps work that mink oil into all the crevices, into all the little pores of the leather. Now look at that beautiful richness added back to that leather. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at that. These are available. A few more of these are still remaining on my website by the way. 
I'm not sure how many have in stock right now, but if you're interested, you can go and purchase one for yourself and have a heirloom quality belt here. I'm just really, like I said, about a year and a half on this belt now. This is, you know, leather is such a beautiful material, and that's why I love good quality leather items like this. It's something you can invest in and take care of. The pleasure of putting on this belt every day, knowing that, you know, this has a year and a half, a little over a year and a half of use on it right now, right around there. You know, the fact that I could have this for years and years, and it's just wearing and getting more and more beautiful you know it's uh, pretty special something that you can take care of instead of one of those junk ones that just wears out you throw it in the trash and start with another old plasticky junk one you have real leather you know something special here but another great skill is to learn how to take care of a piece of leather how to nourish it clean it keep your finish nice and tidy special so that's going to be it for this video right now. You probably remember me mentioning that we had some sharpening to do as well before we're ready for our work day. That will be in another part, a little two-part series here. I hope you enjoyed this part of getting ready for our work day and learning skills that are very useful to any person. If you like this video, please hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel if it's your first time here. Leave me a comment down below, and I hope to see you in part two of this little series.